There's a new WordPress botnet out there that's brute forcing passwords. Hi, Stan. I heard you have an interesting story about a WordPress botnet. Yes, I was reading an article on ZDNet and uh, they pointed me at this other company, which I didn't know about before, Defiant and WordFence. And basically, they analyzed this WordPress botnet. The thing that was interesting about it is it's basically these uh, servers that have WordPress installed. And they have become, you know, usually when we think of a botnet, we think of like computers or laptops. But these are servers that have a problem of some sort. And they're actually executing the task of trying to infect other servers that also have WordPress installed. Uh, and the way they do that is by brute forcing the username and password to the administrative interface so they can install their own plugin and continue perpetrating whatever scheme that they have. For some reason, after all this time, we're still seeing WordPress vulnerabilities out in the wild. And for some odd reason, they're still password related. Uh, the one thing that's interesting about this research is that the security researchers were able to figure out some things that the adversary didn't do quite right uh, in setting up their C2 infrastructure. And by doing that, they actually uncovered the entirety of how the whole thing was set up. Uh, so one of the things that they realized is that this threat actor actually had four different C2 servers from which they were sending commands to all of the infected uh, bots. Um, and the way they were kind of like hiding themselves is by going through this best proxies.ru service which I guess is a service that uh, you know, makes it so that when you're using the internet, it looks like you're coming from like 20,000 different endpoints or something like that. And uh, then basically they send the uh, commands to the WordPress site, which would then basically try to attack other WordPress sites. Uh, so that was interesting. Well, the, the thing that I found the most, most interesting is how the adversaries failed to set up their C2 uh, interface access. So obviously, You've seen this many times. When you go in and you try to uh, set up like some kind of a service, you have like a username and password prompt. And you expect that you can't get any information from the website until you type in that username and password correctly. Not so for these guys. So what they were doing is in HTTP, very technical. But in HTTP, they were sending like this 302 redirect mm -hmm. that would take you to the login page. But inside of that redirect, they were actually including the content of the web page. So you could browse the entire website. Like your browser, I guess when they tested, your browser would redirect you and you wouldn't see it. But if you did it the low level by actually using like a curl command or wget, you actually could see the website. So what did the security researchers do? <laughs> they actually went and they used like some tool, burp I think, to uh, you know, fake out the 302 and change it to a 200, and then they could see the website. And when they saw the website, this <laughs> is basically what the adversary would see to manage the botnet. They could see all the different logs. They could see all the different, you know, whatever information there is as to relationship, uh, how the botnet operates. And one of the logs they were able to see is apparently the, adver the hackers forgot to pay their bills is how they wrote it in their article. <laughs> But what's interesting to me is you know, hackers or defenders or authors of WordPress, everybody's human and everybody can make mistakes. And so the adversaries are using you know, like a brute forcing attack to guess passwords that are, might, might be like too easy. Right. Uh, so there's a human failure there. The adversaries develop this whole thing and they're very really creative probably in their structure and their setup. But it kind of all crumbled because they didn't implement it you know, 100% correctly. Right. Again, I would say human error. They didn't pay their bill, human error. So there's a lot of these things uh, that I guess happen. One of the most interesting things to me about the WordPress story is how related it was to the research uh, John and I were doing uh, related to the tro uh, Scarcy Trojan. The reason why it reminded me of it is because it was a botnet that was for Windows devices, so like laptops, desktops, regular ones they were also using brute forcing. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, it was using a very similar type of mechanism over XML RPC. Uh, and this person or this adversary, which is a different adversary from before, also had a little bit of a failure, so to speak, because when they were installing uh, their version of the malware on these WordPress blogs, they weren't necessarily securing uh, the directory 
So you could actually list the contents of them. <laughs> so w one of the things that we're able to learn is how their botnet uh, is set up. It reminded me yet again that there's multiple bad guys out there that try to use the same techniques or the same flaws, uh, but to use them in different ways. So you found that they were related? Or the that, only or, or way you, it's related is using the word? same technique. It's using the same brute forcing yeah, technique. But you said they were also using WordPress. They were Right, okay. so the infected device, so the things that your computer would go after if you were infected would go after the this WordPress, WordPress block. And everything is hosted here, and that's also where you upload your stolen files. So one of the things we're able to observe is the scarcity thing is using simple password guessing, like admin admin and the other Trojan uh, is using something a little bit more complicated where they take your username and put like a one at the end or something like that. And surprisingly, it works. You know, you wouldn't think it would work, but it works for them. Now, do they say, not in this particular attack, but in the one from the Zenit article, what their purpose was? Like, I know just to build that a button, but at some point they were gonna use it for something. Exactly. So <laughs> the thing that they really concentrated on was the build out of the botnet yeah. and that was the thing that they described the most. So we might see it come back uh, soon. For sure. <laughs> it's clear that there are thousands. They all? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's clear that there's thousands of these types of things right. that are vulnerable and anybody can take advantage of them. Right. It's surprising to me that like reading this article and just like, really a few days ago we were doing this research and I was like, oh wow, that's interesting. You know, multiple people are looking into this and multiple people are trying to hack uh, this right. resource, WordPress. Seemed to be something, again, we talk about this a lot and my story was about this also, that you know, just if you use more sophisticated passwords or you change them, that, that you wouldn't become infected here. But it was very interesting.